Okay, and we can lower down the subdivision. Finally, it's time to animate the general shape of the explosion. So for this part, it's crucial to keep a real-time speed. If you increase a little bit the subdivision, the frame rate will drop down. So in case you have many objects in the scene and you don't want to tweak the subdivision manually, you can simply go under here, render properties, simplify, activate it. For the render, I'm going to let a maximum value of 9, I don't care. And for the viewport instead, we can simply drop down this. And this is going to limit the subdivision of all the objects in the scene that has a subdivision. Only for the viewport temporarily, we have a level of 4. It's still real time, so I'm going to stay on level 4 of the simplify. Now I'm going to go under Object Data Properties, Panel Shape Key. I'm going to click on this plus button. This is the basic shape that we cannot change. So I'm going to click again on this plus button. And this is the first shape. Key, I'm gonna call this ground expansion and set this value on one. So basically entering uh, edit mode and yeah, the shape is changing when I enter edit mode. And so I'm gonna do this in the modifiers. This place, we can activate this icon here. And this means that uh, even if we enter edit mode, we see the displacement acting. So with the ground expansion, shape key selected, pay attention. It's important that you don't select the wrong one. Selecting some faces loops and uh, expanding the selection like this. Activate the proportional editing and activate also the connected only S and the Shift Z in order to scale them only horizontally. And if you also scroll up or down the mouse wheel, you can see that you are expanding the area of influence. Exiting edit mode, I'm gonna go on the last frame with the mouse over here. I'm gonna press I to add a keyframe and instead in the beginning set this value on zero. And actually at the beginning I want to collapse it a little bit more. So what we can do is to cheat a little bit using this range minimum. If you decrease a little bit the range minimum, I'm going to set this on minus one. And this means that now here, the value can go even lower than zero. We're kind of forcing the shape keys to go over the limit. Minus 0 0.4 and with the mouse over here, I'm going to press I to set a keyframe. You can see the shape key of the ground expansion here. Expand the graph editor in order to don't compromise other channels. I'm going to lock this, for example, because I don't want to accidentally change it. I'm going to select these keyframes and right click interpolation mode linear i don't care in this case it's okay yeah very slow and steady movement uh, one note activated this icon down here so that the shape of the mesh will not change every time you enter in edit mode i just repeated this uh, last steps in order to create a new shape key that is responsible for the fireball going up as you can see and now we can animate the initial part of the animation in which everything expands very quickly so for the starting part, I'm going to create not a shape key, but I'm simply animating the scale. On frame, let's say 20 with the mouse here, press I and insert a scale keyframe. And instead on frame zero, I'm going to scale everything all the way down like this and then press I and scale. Let's check the animation. It's kind of slow. So I want to tweak a little bit, but I want to lock the other channels so that I don't compromise anything. I'm going to select the start frame of all the scale channel. Even if you select other channels, it's OK, because anyway, they are locked. So I'm going to rotate. We can even scale this keyframe. This is pretty OK. It's just a matter of tweaking and tweaking these keyframes until it works good for you anyway. At this point, you can have additional parts in this explosion like the middle air shockwave. So I'm going to do this. First of all, ensure to select the basis shape key. Otherwise, you will make a disaster. Enter edit mode and select a face loop like this one, for example, and shift D and Z to pull it up like this. But I want to separate it from this mesh. With this face selected, I'm going to press P, separate selection. Choose this voice here and now exit edit mode and we get another another separated object that has already everything that you need. Now you can see some problems with the transparency and that's because you can't have flat meshes that uses a volume shader. So edit mode, select everything and press E to extrude and there we go. We are giving some thickness. We can even give a better shape like this. Another thing to do is to enter edit mode, select all faces and fix the normals by pressing shift. And there we go. And uh, you might want also to tweak the material, but you have to make it unique. So in the material slot, uh, we don't need the fire material. We just need the smoke. And I'm going to make a unique copy by clicking on this number. And this means that we can play a little bit with the material only for this object here. For example, I want to decrease a little bit the density. And also we can play a little bit with the color ramp in order to have more holes in this part. I'm going to add a new cursor by pressing on this plus button. There we go. There is a new cursor in the middle. I'm going to move it 
right all the way to the left and set the color to black. You can see that we are kind of making more empty parts. So just play a little bit with this color ramp. And uh, it's also very important to check the shape. And so if you play the animation, you can see this ring coming up very quickly from the floor. And that's because the origin is not in its real center. The origin is here. I'm going to go object set origin origin to center of mass volume. There we go. And now the origin is here. And if you play the animation, it should stay there. So for this uh, geometry, it's very important to decrease a little bit the displacement strength, because otherwise you will see some ugly black lines in the renders like I experienced it. And so it's everything I continue tweaking at this point until you are happy. All right, let's see the animation that we get. Of course, this is not perfect because I don't want to spend too much time, but you can go on tweaking. The first part of the explosion, of course, is not perfect. But anyway, I don't care because the, the first second is going to be hidden behind a very big flashlight like in reality. And speaking which about the flashlight is something that I do in post production. And usually it's very easy to do. You just add a yellow layer and, uh, and set that layer on linear screen blending mode or even add can work or stuff like that. Animate the opacity is also a good idea to add a little bit of glare in compositing and using the emission pass. Eventually an additional tutorial on my Patreon if you want to join supporting me and also you get the original project of my nuclear explosion and also you will get all the future experiments that I will do using this technique. As a last note, of course this technique doesn't give you a realistic physics or all the bounces on the floor or walls that uh, a smoke simulation can give you. But to me, all the good things that comes with this workflow are a big deal. So that's it for today. I can't wait to see what you get. Bye bye.